Dragon Ball Sparking Zero has officially been out for at least a month. One of the main things fans of this game have demanded after release is something that felt very unexpectedly disappointing. The in-game character customization has left many players wanting more, with basically 99% of the roster only able to change the different songs played during Sparking Mode, what emotes are used, and what stat items can be equipped. Only a handful of characters get any major customization options when it comes to costumes and accessories, most of them just being variants of Goku. Goku, Gohan, and Vegeta. Other than that, the customization in this game doesn't feel all that special. What most people expected, including me, was a more fleshed out system of customization similar to that of older Sparking games and Raging Blast 2. But we ended up getting the bare minimum in comparison. And I feel like part of it had to do with the release date deadline that Spike was given by Bandai. If they were given at the very least one more year of development, I believe the customization in this game could have been way better than it is right now. Today, I'm going to be talking about what all I would want them to include in potential updates to Sparking Zero's customization. In my opinion, I think what this game lacked most was alternate costumes. Like I said earlier, some of the only characters to really get any major costume customization were Goku, Gohan, and Vegeta. Most of the other characters only got one costume. When you can actually do the slightest bit of research and find out that a lot of the other characters have multiple different designs across the franchise that could have been added as alternate costumes. Where's the turtle gi for Oob? Where's the Busa outfit for Tenshinhan? Why is Teen Gohan's Turtle Gi costume seemingly being saved for DLC when it looks to be finished and modeled in the game's files? Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta doesn't even get his iconic white fur alternate costume that he has had in most of the games. Extra costumes have always been a thing in major Dragon Ball games. It's a reason why games like Xenoverse are so successful, because you can change the official and created characters to look however you want, for the most part. Even earlier games in the Sparking series gave most characters a vast selection of different outfits to choose from, even if it was just a simple color variant. The biggest issue here is that most people were expecting a wider range of alternate costumes for the playable roster, yet there's very little to choose from apart from most of the main characters. If I were to suggest some costumes for future updates, I'd say they should add stuff like, again, the Turtle Gi for Oob, Tenshin Han's Boo Saga outfit, Melee Trunks' jacket with ripped sleeves from the Bojack movie, various costumes for Chiaotzu that were seemingly left out, they could add Bardock's outfit from Xenoverse 2 in a potential crossover deal DLC with other Xenoverse characters, Goku Black in Zamasu's uniform from when Zamasu stole Goku's body, Seventeen's original Park Ranger outfit from the Buu Saga finale, Ultimate Gohan could have gotten regular adult Gohan's entire selection of outfits honestly, because the great Saiyaman outfit without the cape would go insanely hard on Ultimate. If they added the Supreme Kai outfit for Ultimate Gohan, it would probably be the only costume I'd run on him. Broly doesn't even have his scarred design from Movie 10. Turles could use some costumes with his cape. I mentioned mentioned Oob earlier when bringing up the Turtle Gi design from Nekomajin, but I think the most important outfit that he's missing is his End of Z outfit from when he first appeared. Along with Goku not having the End of Z outfit, Goku in general is missing so much in this game, like Teen Goku's original outfit from Classic Dragon Ball. Not even Ultra Instinct Goku can wear the End of Z outfit. The Wii Symbol Gi as well, like why is Ultra Instinct Goku's costume selection so limited? I wouldn't be surprised if they were saving most of these missing outfits for future DLC, but it's still a weird choice to leave it all out of the base game, because it only tells me that the game was super rushed when it came to the content. Another thing that seems to be absent from customization is selectable auras. Why can't we change auras unless it's that V-Jump aura that only a handful of characters get? I think adding selectable auras alone would do so much for this game's customization, and it would let the players get more creative with how they put together their loadouts for certain characters. Again, I would personally love to run Ultimate Gohan with the Supreme Kai outfit and a purple flame aura. Custom auras have even been something fans have wanted in games like Xenoverse, where it's been proven through mods that the developers can do something like that, but they actively refuse to for some unknown reason. Like, if a modder can make it to where changing your aura in the lobby will easily change your aura in the game, why can't that be implemented in the regular game? The same goes for Sparking Zero, because why shouldn't you be able to change your aura in the game when you can do it in one of its PS3 generation predecessors? Hopefully we can get some custom auras in a future update, because it would be one of the biggest things this game could have. And don't pull the same crap like with the V-Jump aura. 
Give every single brand new aura to every single playable character. If a ranked player wants to run Goldo with Ultra Instinct Aura, let them run Goldo with Ultra Instinct Aura. Some auras that would feel right at home in the customization can be the Super Saiyan 2 Aura, Broly's Aura, Goku Black's Aura, the Plasma setting that lets lightning fly out of your aura, and again, all the different color flame auras. I need a purple flame aura, like y'all y'all don't understand. And do you know just how many people would want to rock the Ultra Instinct Aura in PvP, I'd be willing to bet Ultra Instinct Aura players would become their own section of the community. Like, seriously, auras are a big part of what makes powering up in this franchise look so cool. So it'd be kind of disappointing if this game went down the same path as Xenoverse and never let us customize our in-game auras. I don't want one of Raging Blast's best customization features to become a neglected feature. Speaking of a feature that felt neglected, but not as much as auras, but more than costumes, accessories are aren't something I'm dying to see more of, but I feel like there should be a little more to play around with, along with letting other characters use accessories wherever they may fit in. Regardless of their canon status, I would really like to give the Halo accessory to any of the roster characters who aren't dead. It's kinda weird how Goku and Vegeta are basically the only characters who have any sort of accessory customization and no one else. Goku gets a Halo and Scouter Vegeta can take his Scouter off, that's legit all we got. The Raging Blast games didn't really give us all that much to work with, but even with just the halo and customizable auras, it was enough to make a difference with certain players. The final and most upsetting thing I want to talk about is the lack of customization on skill loadouts. This was a big thing in Raging Blast 2, where you could unlock skills for certain characters and place them in different slots when making your customized presets. Some examples of this would be PyCon being able to unlock No Running and Blazing Zephyr from completing missions in his galaxy mode. I feel like something similar could have been applied in Episode Battle where the eight playable story characters could have gotten to unlock certain abilities through completing various missions in their story. One possible way to unlock skills for characters that weren't playable in Episode Battle could have been to re-implement the Challenge Tower mode from the older Budokai Tenkaichi games. For example, completing a tower with someone like Goku Super can possibly unlock the Power Pole Dance skill for all variations of Goku Super, including the Ultra Instincts. One of the most disappointing facts about the exclusion of this feature was that it seemed to be heavily implied skill set customization was going to be a thing, with early gameplay footage showing the buttons at the bottom to enter this feature, but it seems as if it was cut before the game launched. I had only found this out after playing Gohan's episode battle and wanting to put the Raging Masenko ultimate attack on Super Saiyan 2 Teen Gohan. I'm hoping it's re-implemented in a future update, because along with costumes and auras, it can help certain players stand out with the characters that they utilize. I think these issues could easily be fixed by adding new items for free in the DLC updates. Dropping new items with the free updates alongside the paid DLC, like they do with Xenoverse, can help with keeping the game alive for most people. Sparking Zero already seems like it'll have a dedicated player base for a while, so dropping batches of free items with the paid DLC can be way more beneficial. However, on the opposite side of things, I believe it would be a really bad idea to put any new customization items in the paid DLC. It would only cause more complaints among players. It would basically feel like the developers are saying, hey, you want the customization to feel like proper customization, give us more money. Like, no, this shit should have been in the game in the first place. Most people expect these kind of things to be free. It would be insanely weird if we got new customization features for most of the base game day one roster, but then all of those features end up being paid DLC. It would make the game feel insanely restricted, along with it basically barring players from accessing any new content unless they fork over however much money Bandai wants them to. I'm confident Sparking Zero will have free DLC DLC because with the amount of money this game has already made, I think they can afford it. But that's gonna be it for this video. What kind of updates would you like to see for Sparking Zero's customization? What auras and costumes would you like to see in the game? Let me know in the comments. If you guys like this kind of content and you want to see more, please consider leaving a like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified whenever I stream and upload, especially given most people watching this are likely new to the channel. All my social media is in the description along with my Twitch, Patreon, and Discord servers. I've also completely migrated from Twitter to Blue Sky because I'd rather not spend my time scrolling on an app that'll spam me with ads for fake games, AI porn, and political shit that I don't want to see. And for just $4.99 a month, again, $4.99 a month, becoming a channel member will give you access to exclusive cosmetic features and early access to new videos before their scheduled releases. That'll be all for now. Take it easy. My name is Coffee, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.